Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. As He is, so are we, is the title of this devotion. That is a thought. Come on, let that deeply penetrate your heart. As He is, so are we. It says it right here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, <clears throat> that as we that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we. You see, this is the wonder of Christianity that Christ, Colossians 3 verse 4 says, is our life. Or as Paul would say in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live it but Christ that liveth in me, and the life that I live in this flesh, in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, this is the wonder that the, this self that was a prisoner of sin and that was in, in, its na- in its spirit dead to God, the self has now been made alive unto God, and the life that I, Robert, I live, I live by the life of the Son of God in me. This life that I have did not come from my natural parents, but it came from Christ who is my life. And I now live and present myself, Romans chapter 6, unto God, a life from the dead of self. Self was dead in sin and trespasses, Ephesians chapter 2. But God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, made me alive together with Christ. He is my life. And this life that he now lives at the Father's right hand, he gives and reigns in me. Look what it says here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. (coughs) Excuse me. And he has put all things under his feet, and appointed him, Jesus Christ, the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. You see, dear friends, this is the power of Christianity that we become the body of Jesus Christ. It says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, verse 19, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? I am so grateful to know I'm not my own. I'm serious. Some people, they... They say, nobody owns me, I own myself. I do not own myself. I have been bought at a price. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and God, my loving Heavenly Father. And I am so grateful no other spirit can have me. No other spirit can have me. No sin can own me. No demon devil can own me. No, 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 never. I have been bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you struggle with feelings that the devil comes to torment you and afflict you, and he sure can. The Peter says in, Paul says in first or second Corinthians chapter two, he says, we're not unaware of the devil's devices. And, and Satan, he would try if you'd let him. But you can say no, no to unclean thoughts and feelings and desires. You can, and not all of those are of the devil by any means. And you can say no, sin, you are no longer my master. Read Romans chapter 6. Read Ephesians chapter 2. No, you do not own me. I've been bought at a price. I belong to my loving Heavenly Father. And as He is, so am I. So am I. He is my life. 
and he lives in me. He keeps me, upholds me, empowers me, transforms me, and conforms me to the knowledge of himself. Day and night, I'm practically, experientially aware of him because he reveals himself in my whole spirit, soul, and body. And you begin to have a language of a new creation. You begin to have a mindset of one who's born of God. You begin to have a vocabulary of somebody that just talks as a child of God, as a saint of heaven, as a citizen of heaven, as a member of God's own household. Look at the language Jesus had. It was a language of sonship that he now imparts into you and my heart. Amen? And it says here in Romans chapter 12, what an incredible chapter. And just to grab this little bitty verse of verse 5, he says, And we, being ma many, are one body in Christ and individual members of one another. You see, you become part of the whole family of God. You, you can't say, you know, uh, I'm a Christian, but I don't ever go to church. Are you saying, Pastor, that you can't be a Christian if you never go to church? No, I'm not saying that. But it is as, as unthoughtful as saying, I love my wife. We are married and I never go home to be with her. No, first John, the whole letter constantly shows us that if we love the Father, then we love those who are begotten of him, those who are born of him. And we have fellowship with one another in our union with the Father and with his Son. And that fellowship is the distinguishing mark of true Christianity. And it is so needful, Hebrews 10, 24, today, that we don't neglect that fellowship, but we come together to worship and sing together, to receive the word together, and to be bound up together by one spirit, into one body and that the Lord displays the wonders of his person in the whole body. I am not <laughs> the first and the last. Christ is the first and the last. I'm just a small part of his body and I have the privilege to be part of that body and I'm grateful for the part I get to play from. To think that Life Church, that I have the privilege to pastor together with Virginia and all the amazing people, to think that this church exists just because of me, folks, that is silly. I would never think such a thought. Ever would I think such a thought. Never. Because I'm only a small part of it. And yes, I, my part is important, but no more important than anybody else here. I really believe this. I believe this. It is God who is all in all. It is God that gives the fullness. Paul deals with this trap of thinking in Corinthians when he says, are you not still so human in your reasoning when you strive with one another? One another? I'm of Paul, I'm of Peter, I'm of, uh, I'm of Apollos. No, who is Paul, who is Peter, but servants of the Lord, <clears throat> and each does their part, and each will receive their reward from the Lord. But we are just servants. It is God who gives the fullness in the body. He teaches this. And I find this teaching so important because we ought not to think more of ourselves than we ought to. Neither should we think less of ourselves, but only according to the grace given to us. And that we walk humbly in that grace. As he is, so are we. Look at him. He brought from heaven the wonder of his oneness with the Father that was displayed by the sweet meekness and gentle lowliness of his spirit and heart and mind and ways. Oh, friends, Jesus did not display himself with the brutal strength of human abilities. No, the opposite. He was meek and lowly and gentle whereby he displayed his oneness with the Father, the perfection of his holiness. And if we are going to be as he is, then let his meekness, gentleness, and lowliness, his love, his kindness, his forbearance, his goodness, 
so overtake you that in all that you are saying to you begin to embody him you begin to display his very character and nature and i want to charge you from philippians chapter 1 verse 19 to pray this for i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or death. The Apostle Paul had this absolute passion and earnest expectation, as the New King James would say, that no matter what the situation was, listen closely, because he's in prison and he's going through hardships, but no matter what, and he was threatened with execution, that no matter what the situation is, that no matter what the circumstances are, that Christ would be magnified in his body. I personally find this a, a such an important mindset to have, such an important hold on our nature and our person, because all of us, when we go through different circumstances, can forget what life is really for. Folks, it is in all these things that we are to be more than conquerors through him who loved us, it says in Romans 8. And friends, it is in whatever situation you're in. If you're going through pain in your marriage, if you're going through pain financially, if you're going through pain with friends and family, if you're going through pain in being abandoned, forsaken, or denied, or rejected, or not loved, or not accepted, or whatever the circumstances are, you're being demoted, you're being unfairly treated, in all these things, have an earnest expectation that Christ, Christ will be magnified in your body. And I really believe in this, what I'm telling you that as he is, so are we. And that perhaps in the time of your greatest sorrows, in the time of your greatest pain, in the time of your greatest loneliness, the life of Christ is sweeter and sweeter than ever. That you are beautified with his indwelling presence and that people say, I don't understand this. With all you're going through, you're so gracious, you're so kind, you're so forbearing, you're so loving. How is that possible? How can any human being be like this? And you say, it is not I, but Christ in me. And this life is equally available to us all. And that you can be his witness, especially in the times that are most painful and hard and difficult. And therefore, Paul would say in 2 Corinthians, 12 verse 10 i delight myself in my hardships and my difficulties because when i am weak through these pains his strength is made perfect by his grace and i believe this for you that as he is so are you today in whatever you're going through amen have a good day